Welcome to my first attempt ever to make a tutorial. So, I was browsing the old interwebs and I stumbled upon this site, which is cool. And then I found this effect, which I thought was really cool, and I wondered how hard it would be to create. So, I tried to do it. And this is what I ended up with, which I think is pretty close. So, I want to talk about how I did it. And the reason why I want to talk about how I did it is because while I was doing it, I learned something. And that is that there's no way to change state on bubble when you hover over a specific group, which makes it really difficult to do something like this, because you need to know which group you're hovering over, and you need to say like when this piece of state is true, because I'm hovering over it, do this and this and this and this and this. So it is possible. It's just a bit of a roundabout solution. So I knew that on mouse over events exist in JavaScript and I knew that I could access JavaScript in bubble. So I decided to do this. And what this is, is a bit of jQuery looks for a div that has hover group one, two, three, four, five. When it detects mouse over on that div, it runs this function. And just quickly, let me show you where those divs come from here, right? There's a, in the repeating group, each block has an ID attribute of hover group current cell index. So that's creating, that's making this hover group one and this hover group two and this hover group three and this hover group four. So then when I hover over this, it's not all of them that are doing this not all of them that are doing this, which it would be if it didn't have that, it's this specific hover group that's running the mouse over function. And what is that function, you might ask? Well, 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 one of these ones. That is the syntax to run a JavaScript to bubble function, which is something you get from inside this toolbox. And all it does is it just listens for whoops it just listens for a function that has this name and when it hears it it triggers an event and it passes the value through so the value real quick is 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 what we pass in as parameters and all I'm passing in as parameters is the parent group, which means it's specific to the current cell name. So the name comes from here. And this is the repeating group. It's mapping through all of these. And that just means that in the workflow over here, um, every time this function runs, it's triggering this event. And that event is setting the hover state on the index element to the output which is really just the input this really just this input that we're giving it and just to complete the picture the index state is just a arbitrary piece of state that exists here and receives that text and then how we're animating this now is this bar here. First of all, it has a width transition. And then the conditional is saying if index hover, that's our state, is equal to parent group city name. And parent group city overall is 3, make it this big. If it's 2, change the color, make it this big. If it's 1, so what is overall? Overall is this. It's coming from the air table and I just have access to it because I've given everything in the repeating group access to it by doing a one of one of these ones. Oops. One of these ones. Air table cities. That's just um get data from an external API. API is air table cities. So yeah, that's basically how it works. Let's just have another look at 
all the functions together in context now that you sort of understand them. So we have the HTML element that looks for the hover group with the current cells index. So that's how we get the that's how we differentiate each of these divs. Because remember, each one has its own ID. Right? So that'd be one, that'd be two, that'd be three. And that ensures that when you hover over one, you fire the function that belongs to one. And because you fire the function that belongs to one, you pass in the variables that belong variables, parameters, I don't know. You pass in the parameters that belongs that belong to one. And because you do that, you set the state attached to index to, you set this, to the variables that belong to number one, as opposed to number two, number three, number four, number five. And that happens because here there is a JavaScript to bubble A event, which listens for this thing and when the hover function is run which is run in the HTML and C bubble function hover that's where it's run and it's run when there's a mouse over and when there's a mouse out set to no and when that is detected it fires an event and that event is what sets our index so it's not complicated it's just a roundabout way of doing a thing